Welcome. On January 25th, we're going to have this fiery full moon in the sign of Leo. Leo is a sign that enjoys play and romance and joy. It's a time to be creative and take time away from work and to focus on your hobbies and pleasure and joy. Now this full moon, it's going to be directing our attention to all matters of leadership and creativity. Full moons, they always bring about endings or closures and culminations. They bring about the realization of something that's inside of you or the realization of something that's inside of you is becoming concrete in the physical world. Now, this full moon it forms a fixed T-square between the Sun and Pluto in the sign of Aquarius and Jupiter in the sign of Taurus. So think of a T-square as a form of like a stalemate situation. Uh, there are things that could be bottled up inside of you that need to be released and this stored up energy, it can erupt when it's activated. Um, fixed squares that involve the sign of Leo, they bring this challenge that's to our ego, to our self. Full moons reveal like a spotlight. They show us things that are ending and the progressive sun in Aquarius rules the sign of Leo, this full moon. And so the combining of the forces with the planet of Pluto, the planet of transformation, when the sun and Pluto unite, it really reveals this uncomfortable truth about who we've become and where we need to release the urge to control these outcomes in order to align more with a healthier, authentic version of ourselves. Pluto is the planet of transformation and it's willing to dig deep to get to the bottom of things in order to activate change. Now, Leo is seen as a natural leader that leads with um, loyalty, generosity, and honor. This full moon, it may reveal where we have lost touch with what makes us special, what makes us unique. Now, due to the square of Pluto, it might reveal where we may have strayed from our integrity and possibly resorted to control tactics because that's Pluto wanting to control the situation. It's about controlling others due to our fears or possible paranoia. Pluto wants to transform, yet it may also bring to light these aspects we'd prefer to keep private or in the shadows because Pluto is about secrets, wanting to keep our own uh, private and then wanting to reveal some things about others. Now, while this lunar phase, it promises an emotional journey, it's really important to recognize that your challenges um, you're, that you're experiencing now, they're just the, the small stepping stones that you are moving towards for your personal growth. So work to be heart centered and connect with your inner child to feel more stable. That's Leo. Now the sun that's square to Jupiter, this is going to add another layer of emotional and potential drama and exaggeration. Jupiter encourages all types of expansion and this expansive energy, it may lead to clashes with your ego, the sun and Leo, both um, representing who you are. And it could also be clashes with a battles of will. So focus at this time to be as objective as possible. Identify where you are resisting feedback or um, resisting new opportunities. Now on a positive note, uh, Jupiter is forming this beautiful harmonious trine with the planet of Venus that's in the sign of Capricorn. This is offering us a positive outlet with all of these tensions going on. This alignment of the two benefic energies of Venus and Jupiter, it's assuring us that joy is attainable and that the ultimate outcome of these challenging um, energies holds the promise of growth and prosperity. Welcome, I'm your astrologer Patricia Tate and this is your Leo Full Moon Astrology Forecast for all 12 signs. To get updates as soon as they're released, please like and subscribe. So let's dive in. So for Aries Sun and Aries Rising, this full moon is occurring in your fifth house. Now the fifth house is the house of joy and children and creativity. It's art, it's music, it's you starting things. It's about um, recreation. It's the house of where we take risks. It's how you express yourself when you want to enjoy the pleasures of life. So we have some things ending and we also have some things being revealed. The full moon is really directing your attention to those topics um, and it's, it's going to revolve around your leadership. Full moons, they bring about these endings and the culminations. So there could be a project or a creative project or something that's ending. 
Uh, the fifth house is also the house of your children. So this could be children moving out, something that has to do with those topics, or your child um, graduating or moving on to something um, with their adult life. Now, they bring about this realization of something inside of you that uh, is becoming more concrete in the world for you. Now, this full moon, it forms a fixed T-square between the sun and Pluto. Now, the sun and Pluto is in your 11th house of your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals. It's the networks that you align yourself up with that is connected to peers um, that has to do with with kindred spirits. It's people that you do things with in order to move forward with your personal goals, um, your personal aspirations. Now, a fixed T-square, um, this is about a stalemate between what's going on either with your children or pleasures and joys and things that you want to enjoy with creativity and these hopes, these goals, these dreams, these things that you want to do. There's some things that are bottled up inside of you there's a realization of of what is going on and something needs to be released. It's about you holding back and not saying what you're thinking and not sharing what you're feeling. And so it's this energy can erupt when it's going to be activated and this is gonna be a time of activation. Now, the fixed square involves Leo. So Leo is a challenge to the ego. The progressive sun that rules over Leo um, combined with the planet of Pluto. Remember that Pluto is trans transformation. Pluto is not afraid to dig deep. When the sun and Pluto unite and come together as one, it's about revealing uncomfortable truths. It's about digging down deep and saying, what's going on here? The, this, these are my hopes, my dreams, my goals, my networks, my aspirations, the organizations in which you belong to. So it could be revealing some uncomfortable truths about what has become with you? How has this changed you? And where you need to like release the urge of control, where you need to be more in line with um, a healthier version of yourself, what needs to end and what needs to, um, the seeds will be planted to begin again. Pluto being the planet of transformation, it's going to be digging to the bottom of things in order to force you to change. Now, Leo is seen as a natural leader and it's revealing where you kind of have lost touch of what makes you special. What what do you bring to the table with your creativity? Is it poetry? Is it music? Is it um, the fifth house has everything to do with children and it has to do with the way that you express yourself. I always say that it's like adult playmates of who you spend time with. And so this is going to be an opportunity of where have you resorted to these tactics of uh, because you're working from fear and um, possibly even paranoia with Pluto wanting you to transform these areas of your life and say, who am I aligning myself with? And is this for my best and highest good? And what are some things that I want to keep private in my life? Now, there's also this square to Jupiter. Now, Jupiter is this gaseous gaseous um, expansive planet and it's in your second house of your self-worth your cash your property um, the second house is your salary your income so this this t-square really the release point is with who you are and how you resonate with how people see you the second house is your movable property it's your skill set it's your income it's your attitude towards money it's your self-esteem and so it's offering potential drama and exaggeration because it's expanding what you're feeling, the tension going on between those two areas of your life. And so Jupiter's encouraging this expansion and it may lead to clashes with your ego. The ego is Sun and the ego is Leo. So both of those areas of your life and it could be a battle of wills between what are you wanting to do with how you want to explore um, pleasure, joy, something to do with your children and what you want to do in the outside world with and who you align yourself with. Um, teams, these could be uh, things that have uh, groups that have to do with work related and pleasure related, like uh, like a bowling league or a reading club or um, uh, where you volunteer for um, like mission trips or um, 
it's it's you in the outside world with other people with how you want to align with so there's there could be this battle of of your ego and of wills now on a positive note um, we have Jupiter here in a beautiful trine with Venus Venus is at the top of your chart it's your career it's your legacy it's how you want people to see you and know you uh, Venus does represent your your finances but it also represents beauty so it's in this harmonious trine, trine saying look you're going to have to work this out you're going to have to have less drama um, Venus in Capricorn is is offering this outlet with these two benefics of Jupiter and Venus of uh, that whatever you are working towards is for your best and highest good so don't ignore the transformation push to to integrate where is um, ego and where is your will and where is your drive and make sure that you are in alignment with your best and highest good because it's pushing you towards this challenge saying I'm promising you growth and prosperity for your career for your legacy how you want people to see and know you the tenth house is your status it's the highest part of your chart with your reputation and um, it could be bosses or government and and so all of this is you being seen in the spotlight in the outside world from others so Aries, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. I invite you to join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Taurus Sun and Taurus Rising, currently we're going to have a full moon in your fourth house of your home, your family, your traditions, your roots. The fourth house is like genealogy. It is what grounds you and connects you um, in this uh, to your home. It's your ancestors, your foundation. It's also uh, real estate and your property. And it's the past that you share with others. And so this is everything that's at the bottom of uh, like that grounds you into this lifetime right now. And so you're having this full moon and you're feeling it. It's going to be passionate. It's directing you. So the sun is at the top of your chart and it's illuminating uh, where you need to focus on issues that have to do with home. Uh, pay attention to um, leadership and creativity. Full moons, they always bring about these endings and culminations. So this could be somebody leaving your home. This could be um, moving from your home. Or this could be finally understanding where you came from through some kind of genealogy. Or it could be related to parents. Um, full moons, they, they bring about these closures or these endings. Or the realization that there's something inside of you that's becoming more concrete in the physical world. And so this full moon is forming this um, very fixed T-square. So a T-square, here's the sun, with Pluto at the top of your chart. And a T-square, um, it's about these two opposing planets that need to work some things out. There's the T-square between the sun and Pluto and um, Jupiter in Taurus that has to do with your first house of self. So Pluto and the sun in your 10th house is your career, your legacy, how people see you. So everything that's going on has people seeing you in the outside world. It is authority figures. It is a boss. It is your career. It's your public life. It's your reputation. It's what you want to achieve. And so um, this T-square, think of it as the stalemate situation going on between who you are in the outside world, who you are at home, and Jupiter and Taurus in your first house of self. Who are you? Being torn between these two aspects of your life. The first house represents your health, your vitality. It's your power, your self-expression. The first house is your personality. It's your appearance. I always say it's like your business card or your website. It's what people see or how you present yourself to the world. And so we have this situation going on where these two things are at odds and they will release through you. So a T-square, It's um, there's this bottled up energy that's been built up inside and it's going to need to be released. And the stored up energy is now going to be activated and something, th the result will be through you. So something that involves home and career, one at the top, one at the bottom. 
Now, the progressive sun in Aquarius rules the sign of um, this Leo full moon. And so we've got uh, this energy of everything that has to do with you and your pride. And it's combining with the planet of Pluto. Now, Pluto is the planet of transformation. When Pluto and the sun come together and they unite, it really combines... Um, the energy of the two and it reveals these uncomfortable truths about possibly where who have you become in the outside world your reputation um, about where you need to have an urge for control or people want to have uh, control over you Pluto is about control and it's also about truths and it's revealing these uncomfortable truths about uh, where you need to release the urge of control and where you have um, where you where, it's about secrets it's also about like where you need to release this urge and be a more he healthier authentic version of yourself Pluto being the planet of transformation will have you diving deep uh, to get to the bottom of things in order to activate this change. So it could be that uh, there's an authority figure or a boss or somebody that's above you that's um, either holding secrets or wanting to keep secrets or wanting you to change for their because of them and you not being able to be your authentic self. Now, Leo down at the bottom leo is seen as the natural leader and this is you looking at where have you lost touch with what makes you special at the cost of other people where have you lost touch with your identity with your creative side um, this t-square is going to reveal where you've strayed from your um your integrity and you resorted to possible tactics that um out of fear or out of paranoia of of people wanting to have control over you or you wanting to control every single situation pluto wants to transform but it's also bringing a light to aspects that you want to keep private and in the shadows remember a, the sun illuminates the moon the moon does not have any natural light and so the moon is your private side and the sun is what you show to other people and so right now it's about things coming from the shadows and being revealed that have to do with career home and personally you now the sun square to jupiter so jupiter your first house of self um, jupiter is this expansive planet and it's going to be adding this emotional and potential drama and exaggeration remember that the moon is emotional and the sun represents you and the moon is your emotional side and jupiter Jupiter wants to expand it and so it's expanding drama it's exaggerating things Jupiter encourages expansion and it could lead to possible clashes with your ego and battles of will that have to do with home and family matters and your career your legacy or your reputation of how people see you in the outside world now on a positive note uh, Jupiter is forming this beautiful trine to Venus in your ninth house so Venus is beauty, uh, love, money, wants to bring things together, and it's in your ninth house of cross-cultural experiences and connection to spirituality. Um, the ninth house represents foreign people, places, things. And so this harmonious um, trine is saying, remember where you've come from remember your connections dive deep into your spirituality about what keeps you connected it's offering you this positive outlet for your tensions for your um for your your angst to uh, because this could be erupting and you have to say what is truly meant for my heart and where is my ego getting in my way and so this this is a positive with these two benefics of Jupiter in your first house of self and Venus in your the house of spirituality and it the, okay so the ninth house is also um, not just religion but it's um, the ninth house is uh, legal matters the ninth house is education the ninth house is foreign people places things it's law it's advertising and so it's adventure and so this could be an opportunity to say uh, you need to tap into are you working from ego or not and so on a positive note uh, this 
this full moon is letting us know that when we work through this energy, it's about attaining the ultimate outcome of these challenges that hold the promise of growth and prosperity for where you're supposed to be in life, what you're really supposed to be doing, what holds you down with a home, and where do you want to be with your career, your legacy, or authority figures, and who you are. And so, um, Taurus, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Please, I invite you to join me live at Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Gemini Sun and Gemini Rising, we start off with the full moon in your third house. Now the third house for you represents communication, it's your neighbors, it's siblings, it is education, but it's things that are going on closer to home. The third house represents how you communicate on a daily basis with other people. This can be through email, phone, text, and it's also about traveling short distances. And so the full moon is directing your attention to um, creative uh, projects and um, um, this could be writing projects or journaling or remember it's email, phone, text, writing letters, um, writing, reading books, uh, education, it, but it's the house of connecting with others also. And so the full moon, it's revealing some things about leadership, creativity. It's about an ending. So there could be some projects that are ending or neighbors moving away or siblings moving away. Uh, full moon um, in your third house, it's also going to be about the realization that something inside of you is becoming more concrete in the physical world. Now, this full moon, this full moon is forming a T-square and we have the sun and Pluto in your ninth house of foreign people, places, things, where I want to travel, uh, spirituality, getting work published. Uh, the ninth house is also legal matters, teaching a class or taking a class or taking a workshop. The ninth house represents all cross-cultural experiences. And so we have this fixed energy of the sun and Pluto uh, coming together and it's kind of like this stalemate situation like who's going to give and there's these things that have been bottled up inside of you about I want to go here I want to travel here I want to I want to uh, like look into this uh, spirituality I want to take this class I want to have this work published and um, there's something that needs to be released and there's this stored up energy and it's about uh, it's about to be uh, it erupts when it's active and the activation point is the T-square. And so we look to Jupiter. Jupiter is in your 12th house. Your 12th house is your dreams, your intuition. The 12th house is where we go to sit, to be alone, to do shamanic work, to um, to tap in, to heal. It's the house of, of our subconscious mind. It's where we go to meditate. It's for yoga. It's also institutions. And this could be um, ashrams and it could be uh, yoga. It could be hospitals. It's all of these things where we literally go and sit to be alone, to tune into a heart-centered space. It's our private inner world that we tap into our angels, our guides, our spirit, our, our ancestors, um, all of the things that are not seen. And so this the stalemate situation is what you want to do, what you have ending in your life, and then where it is erupting out of. Now, the progressive sun in Aquarius rules the um, the Leo full moon, and it combines with this energies of Pluto. Now, when Pluto um, combines with it, Pluto wants to reveal. Pluto takes our secrets and just uh, brings them to the surface. Pluto um, wants us to release the urge to control all outcomes and where we have to look to say where do I have the urge to control people places and things I need to focus on my own and I should also focus on who wants to have control over me because I need to be aligned with a more healthier authentic version of myself um, Pluto being the planet of transformation says I'm going to dig to the bottom of these things in order for me to change and be real to be authentic um, the full moon is going to be revealing where we have like lost touch with what makes us special what makes us unique because Leo is the 
is a sign of creativity and it's art and it's music and it's where we take these risks. And so where are you wanting to take these risks with writing and journaling and classes and short distance travel? What makes you special? And due to this, this uh, T square, it's going to be revealing where have you strayed from your in, your your integrity. Um, where do you resort to possible control tactics um, out of either fear or out of paranoia? Um, Pluto wants you to transform, but it's going to be bringing a light to some things that you may want to keep private. Remember that we have the sun and the sun illuminates the moon and so it's going to be revealing some things that you want to keep private. And the outlet is your 12th house, your house of fears. The 12th house is also the house of people who support us, like our hidden support. But it's our, it's our dreams, it's our intuition. So know that there could be some things revealed. This could be um, revealing a, a hidden talent that you might want to keep private or, or a hidden practice that maybe you're wanting to keep private or um, health issues that you've been wanting to keep private or uh, hidden enemies uh, like the 12th house is is the house of hidden now there is this Sun square to Jupiter it's adding this other layer of emotional and potential like drama and exaggeration because Jupiter is this gaseous planet that uh, literally expands everything that it touches um, for the good or for not and so Jupiter is encouraging expansion of this energy and it could clash with your ego and um, remember the sun represents ego and the moon is your private side and so there's there could be this battle of wills about what do you want to do and what others want you to do and this could be short distance travel long distance travel wanting to have work published um, wanting to share wanting to take a class wanting to take a workshop something that has to do with the way that you communicate with others in the outside world now Jupiter is also in this beautiful harmonious trine to Venus I love this because Venus is the goddess of love she wants to unite and she wants to bring everything together and it's beautiful so it's about all of these tensions going on you have these two great benefics of Jupiter and Venus saying let's work together what can we learn from all of this if we transform this energy and not work from a place of fear and ego what can happen well Venus is in your eighth house that's your eighth house of shared resources it is the house of, of alimony debt um, the eighth house is uh, uh, other people's opinions its uh, inheritance will um, it's where we want to have these deep connections with other peoples but it's also taboo topics and joy Joint ventures and so this could be an opportunity where taboo topics can be brought up and there will be some healing or something that's brought from this um, or a connection or a deeper connection with somebody that you could be sharing with or somebody that's sharing with you on a more deeper level uh, amid all of this um, Jupiter working with Venus is saying I am telling you that this work is attainable and the ultimate outcome of this tension is for you to work through and to challenge you to not work from a place of fear not work from a place of paranoia but to say um, there's promise of growth and prosperity if you just get out of your way and remove your ego all right, so Gemini, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Cancer Sun and Cancer Rising, your full moon is occurring in your second house. The second house for you represents your self-worth, your cash, your property, your finances, your salary, your income, and your talents. Know that because you're Cancer Rising, that um, the moon is very important and wherever it is, you definitely feel it. And so it's like your feelings are changing every two to three days. But on full moons, new moons, and eclipses, you really have this opportunity for a major transformation in your life so the full moon is directing your attention to those topics that have to do with your cash your property your self-worth your your self-esteem your work ethic all of those topics there's going to be something that's going to be revealed or illuminated it's about bringing the real
realization that there's something inside of you that's becoming more concrete. The, the direction in life in which you're supposed to be going. Now, this full moon is in a fixed square with the planet of uh, Sun and Pluto that is to that's opposite of you. And um, so there's this opposition going on about two opposing things in your life. And then the T-square of Jupiter is the release point. So let's start with the Sun and Pluto. Um, a T-square represents an opportunity where there's this stalemate going on between what do you want to do for your money, your resources, your cash, your property, and the Sun and Pluto being in your eighth house of your shared resources, alimony, debt. This could be money or resources that you share with family or with a business partner or a significant other. The eighth house also represents your private affairs or where you have these deep connections. It's where you talk about taboo topics and it's all joint ventures that are either personal or private and so there's something going on there that um, you've been keeping bottled up and it's about to be released all this stored energy can be erupted when um, can erupt when it's activated and so there's this t-square going on of where is it going to erupt to it's going to erupt to uh, Jupiter now, Jupiter is in your 11th house of your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, your networks of things that you want to do, your aspirations. The progressive sun in Aquarius rules the sign of this Leo full moon. It rules the sign of Leo. And so it's combining forces with the planet of Pluto. Pluto takes no prisoners. When the sun and Pluto come together and they unite, it's about revealing these uncomfortable truths that you um, have or that you've been trying to keep private from other people. This can be things that have to do with your family. This is probably um, your own personal resources and the resources that you share with others. When the Sun and Pluto come together, we have this opportunity to release this urge of control. And this this is about another opportunity to have this healthier, authentic version of partnership and relationships. Um, Pluto often works from a place of paranoia and fear and he works in the shadows and together it's wanting you to transform to dig deep to get to the bottom of things so you can transform your shared resources area of your life and so you've got what is mine what is ours and some truths about your fears of and this also could be your partner's fears and how do we work with um, your partner's fears or your fears and transform and make some things that are and create some things in your life that are better. Now, Leo, um, this full moon in Leo, it's revealing in your second house of where you have basically lost touch with um, your self-esteem, with who you are. Um, it's what makes you special what makes you what tapping into your inner child your creativity your art your music about your skill set about really revealing um what is what makes you you and due to this square with pluto it can reveal maybe where you've um, possibly strayed from your integrity and you've resorted to maybe some control tactics with other people or this could be out of uh, your fears or this could be out of paranoia or this could be where people are wanting to control you out of their fear or their paranoia remember these are this could be business partners um, family members if we if you share some things with them and this could also be significant others or um, partners life partners um, the fears Pluto does want to transform it's all for the best and highest good yet it's bringing this light to aspects that you want to keep private and in the shadows you're wanting to keep like basically definitely your life private as a as a cancer rising um, like your home and your traditions and your family are the most important things to you so the Sun square to Jupiter is going to be adding another emotional and potential layer uh, for drama and exaggeration Jupiter expands things the moon is feelings and the Sun is who you are and so it's encouraging this expansive energy that could clash with 
your ego and you're feeling like this is a battle of wills like I am having to fight my partner I am having to f to argue with my significant other or my family member in order to get what I want and the release point is going to be through your hopes your wishes your dreams your goals um, because Jupiter is is in this uh, beautiful harmonious trine Let's go back to Jupiter. Jupiter is in this beautiful harmonious trine in your seventh house. Jupiter wants to expand things to say let let's just quickly get this out in the open and and get it over with and let's just reveal it let's move on and it's working with the planet of Venus in your seventh house of partners or marital partners or business partners or the seventh house is also where you negotiate and you have these these conversations with others it's also your clients it's your one plus one house it's you with somebody else it could be best friends significant others marital partners it's uh, love contractual relationships it's basically social contracts and so you working through this energy will expand this area of your life and so you have the two great benefics of Jupiter and Venus working together to say let's work through these tensions that have been brewing underneath bring them to the surface and make sure that we get out of our own way um, that the cooperation is attainable and the ultimate outcome of this these challenges holds the promise of growth and prosperity between what do you want and your connection with others and staying connected with your goals your your hopes your dreams um, for you to connect with um, connect with things that you want to do joy and pleasure all right, so Cancer, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Leo Sun and Leo Rising, this full moon is in your first house of self. So we have everything that has to do with you, how you're seen in the outside world, your strength, your habits, your your image, your um, health, your vitality, your self-expression, your power. The first house is how people see you. I always say it's like your website or your business card of what you are presenting to the world. Full moons, they generally bring some kind of an ending or some kind of a closure. They bring a culmination. And this one is bringing the realization that there's something inside of you that's becoming more concrete in the physical world it's now th this full moon is forming um, this fixed square a fixed T square so with uh, the Sun and Pluto in your seventh house so let's talk about that for just a second the Sun represents uh, your you and it's in your seventh house of partnership and the seventh house is the plus one house. It's you with a business partner, you with your best friend, significant other, you with clients. The seventh house is contractual agreements and partnerships. It's how you negotiate. It's open enemies. It's exes. It's literally you with somebody else. And there, the sun is in that house and it's illuminating or revealing some things about you personally so it could be a friend revealing something or a business partner or a significant other or a marriage partner and so this fixed t-square is also with the planet Jupiter at the top of your chart in your 10th house of your career your legacy authority figures this is the release point we have something about you and something about partnerships that have been brewing about things that have been bottled up inside and this store this the stored up energy is going to has the opportunity to erupt when it's activated so it's going around your chart and it will the release point will be the 10th house seen by everybody in the outside world or seen by authority figures or um, your professional life your reputation the 10th house is um, honors and rec reputation and your life path and your career the 10th house is the top of your chart where everybody can see it so whatever is going on between you and a partner it's about the visual that everybody will have the opportunity to see this and nothing will be personal or private or quiet about it 
And so when the sun and the Plu and Pluto come together, um, it's about revealing these uncomfortable truths about who you have become and where you need to release the urge of control. Um, Pluto is the planet of transformation and it, it wants you to release these urges of, of control and fear and saying, I need to align with a more healthier version of myself and a friend, myself and partners, myself and clients. I need to release the uh, desire to have control over everything to become a more healthier, authentic version of myself. Pluto being the planet of transformation will have you digging deep to get to the bottom of things in order for you to evolve and change. Now, Leo is seen as um, it, it's, it's pride. Leo is your pride. And this full moon in Leo is revealing where you've lost touch with what makes you special. It's in your first house of self. Where have you compromised who you are and what you share with others and pleasure and joy, creativity and children? The, the, it represents everything to do with possibly where you take risks and just pleasure. Um, so you're going to be looking at um, what makes you special? Where have you squashed that for other people? The square to Pluto reveals where you've strayed from your personal integrity and you have resorted to these tactics of, I need to have more control over the situation. I am working from a space of fear and paranoia and um, where you're doing that the sun is going to reveal it because the sun and it could be a partner shining a light on you or a friend saying, Hey, I want to bring this to your attention, or it could be a client, but it will be somebody in that area of your life shining a light on you all about how you are presenting yourself, your strength, your habits and everything to the world. Now the sun, um, square to Jupiter is adding another layer of uh, emotional feelings and potential drama and exaggeration about what's not that bad. Um, remember that Jupiter is the release point. So you've got uh, friends or acquaintances or significant others revealing some things about you or bringing them to the light. And Jupiter is um, adding to the emotional pain uh, because it's the moon and it's about tapping into your feelings and um, drama and making things bigger than truly what they they really are and this expansive energy can possibly lead to some clashes with your ego or battles of will between you and a partner you and clients you and significant others um, basically you with somebody else that you would consider important in your life or um, somebody that you would negotiate or have contracts with. Remember that the seventh house is not just um, significant others. It's the one plus one house of who you connect up with others either for work or for pleasure and joy, but it's that one-on-one -on -one, um, co uh, connection with others. Now, the positive that comes from this, the way out, Jupiter is in a beautiful, harmonious trine to Venus. Venus and Jupiter are the great benefics. So we have these two planets saying, I'm going to work together to help you transform and get past yourself, get past your ego. Jupiter is forming this harmonious um, sign or this harmonious trine saying there's a lot of tension and that if you stay out of your own way, acknowledge where you own fault, uh, acknowledge where um, th the things that are about yourself, where you've had these desires of control or, or possibly have been out of line, that you are able to attain the ultimate outcome that these challenges hold as the promise of growth and prosperity for yourself. Um, because Leo is my pride can be hurt. And um, the sun in your seventh house is when somebody else says it, it's like a dagger to your heart. And so know that um, try to try to stay in a headspace, not a heart space and work through this and know that um, Venus being in your sixth house is you might need to t talk to a mentor or to a guide or to tap into something that has to do with some daily habits of of physical activity or or yoga or something that has to do the the sixth house is your daily habits and your mental physical spiritual psychological health and well-being and so it's bringing this to the your attention so 
you can be a healthier version of you. So Leo, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Virgo Sun and Virgo Rising, this full moon is occurring in your 12th house. So the 12th house is the house of fears. It's the house of isolation. It's where we go to be alone and to tap into things. It's um, the house of um, shamanic messages, dreams. Um, it's uh, our intuition. It's also the house of rehabilitation, hospitalization, institutions. It's the other dimensions. It's where we go for rest and retreat to tap into our subconscious mind or to tap into um, the spiritual realm. It's where you go to say, I need to sit with this for a little bit to say, where, where are my feelings on this? It's a private house. It's the house of fears, and but it's also the house of hidden supports that we just didn't know were out there and available to us. And so you've got this full moon and it's revealing some things and offering some endings. This could be um, ending of something that has to do with karma. It could be an ending of some kind of a creative project that you've been working on behind the scenes. Um, a, a full moon here is going to be offering you the realization that something that's been going on is now becoming more concrete for you in the physical world. Now this full moon is forming this T-square with uh, the Sun and Pluto in your sixth house of your mental, physical, spiritual, psychological, health, well-being, your daily habits, um, mentors and guides, and the release point will be Jupiter. Jupiter will be at the, the top, uh, not the top, but like your ninth house in your chart of foreign people, places, things, uh, publishing, legal things, cross-cultural experiences. So let's talk about the fixed square. So a fixed square, a fixed square between Sun and Pluto, um, think of it as there's the stalemate because be gone, uh, going on between you privately, your dreams, your fears, and um, a mentor or a guide or your daily habits, or uh, this is also pets. And so there's something that's going on that there's a stalemate situation of things that have been bottled up inside of you about uh, things that you want to do for your, your daily habits, things that uh, you want to experience. And so it's between you and this could be with a mentor or guide and not seeing eye to eye on some things or you with other people that you are spending your day to day um, happenings with that there is something that needs to be addressed and released. And so when the energy gets stored up, it erupts when it's activated and it will be activated through your ninth house fixed squares, they bring about this challenge and it's going to be to your ego. It'll, it'll be, okay, moon is your emotions and your feelings and Leo is privately not wanting to share these things with other people. So it's about having your ego being wounded. The progressive sun in Aquarius rules the sign of this Leo full moon. And it's about, it's combining forces with the planet of Pluto. Now, when the sun and the Pluto and the planet of Pluto come together, it's revealing very uncomfortable truths about um, who you may have become and what you need to release in order to um, become your authentic self. Pluto digs deep. It's about transformation and it's wanting you to become this uh, healthier, authentic version of yourself. And it's about digging deep to get to the bottom of things of where you need to change. Why do you need to change? Where do you have this, this desire for um, control over your daily habits and possibly over, over others that you work with? Now, Leo. Um, Leo, this full moon in Leo being private and in your 12th house, it's where have you lost touch with things that bring you joy and pleasure? Um, Leo is what makes you authentic, your creative side, your tapping into your inner child. It's where have you lost touch with what makes you special and unique? Pluto reveals an area of your life where you may have strayed from your own integrity or resorted to control tactics. This could be with others or 
um, with yourself. It's about wanting to have control, having control over all of the situations in order for you to feel stable and safe. And there can be no growth that comes from that. And so this sun is bringing a light to these aspects that you want to keep private and in the shadows. Now, your moon being in your 12th houses, there could be some things that um, you don't want people to know about you that you're trying to keep private or um, about your dreams, about your intuition, or about things that you've had to do for your health, taking time out for your health. This could be institutions, it could be hospitalizations, but it's about your private life being um, some things being revealed and being brought to light. Now the sun is square to Jupiter adds this other emotional layer. Jupiter expands everything and the moon is your feelings. And so there's this opportunity of potential drama and expansive energy that could lead to clashes with your ego. Remember that Leo is like your heart, your soul and how you feel. And so there could be these battles of wills between um, you and how you see yourself privately wanting to keep some things on the down low or keep some things uh, private with other people. The sixth house is also co-workers and it's it's people that you, it's the balance between your home and your work and not wanting everything to be brought to light. Now on a positive note we have Jupiter. Um, Jupiter is trining Venus. Remember that the release point is going to be Jupiter here in your ninth house of foreign people, places, things. And so um, it's it, it, the release point focusing on um, cr these cross-cultural experiences that you could be having or that you're wanting to have or that maybe somebody is judging you on them. This is also the house of religion and it's the house of publishing and legal things. And so this could be being judged on those or wanting to keep some of those things private. I just know it's going to be like this battle of wills between what you want to keep private and what other people are going to be seeing. Now, Jupiter is in a uh, harmonious trine to Venus in your fifth house of children, of pleasure, of joy, of art and music and creativity. And so this harmonious trine is offering this positive outlet that says, look, work through this. Don't uh, stay out of a space of ego. Try to work from a head space, not a heart space and attain the ultimate outcome of these challenges by um, growing from it and prospering from these, these challenges. Um, and then you'll be able to tap more into um, uh, not just childlike activities, but to heal the inner child. It's it's being in a space to hear some things about yourself that you just don't want to hear or don't want to acknowledge because it's other people's opinions and you don't see it, you don't feel it, you don't know it, and then they're going to be bringing it up. And so take it as an opportunity to grow from it. So Virgo, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Please join me live on Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Libra Sun and Libra Rising, the full moon is occurring in your 11th house. So your 11th house is your hopes, your wishes, your dreams, your goals, your aspirations. It's who you align yourself with in order to get where you want to be. These can be work associates. These can be uh, people that you join with workshops or clubs. Uh, they could be kindred spirits. It could be uh, peers. It's your social circle. Um, there's going to be something that will, there'll be an ending. There'll be some things that will be revealed. A full moon always brings our attention to um, things that uh, will have a culmination of. Now, this full moon is going to be bringing the realization that there's something inside of you or the realization of something inside of you about your goals that uh, is going to become more concrete with the physical world. This full moon is in a T-square with the sun in sun and Pluto in your fifth house of joy, creativity, fun, pleasure, um, children. The fifth house is where you give birth to things. The fifth house is love affairs. It's what you do on the weekend. It's how you express yourself. The fifth house is where you take risks and the, it's about um, recreation and pleasure and it's gambling and it's the sun and Pluto here are, are opposing each other. There's something about either your children or 
or creative projects or uh, it could be somebody that you're having an affair with or somebody that you're in these groups with that something is going to be revealed there's like this stalemate between the two of these um, areas of your life and that it erupts when it's released because it's the stored up energy so when it's activated it's going to release at the uh, with Jupiter in your eighth house so this is your eighth house of your shared resources uh, your this could be alimony child support cash property that you share with other people the eighth house is um, joint ventures taboo topics it's inheritances it's wills it's anything that you either share with a business partner a uh, significant other or it could be a family member if like there's a, a, a will or if there's family resources that are together. And so there's going to be this clash between what you want to do, what others want you to do, and where it erupts from. So the progressive sun in the sign of Aquarius um, is pointing and it, it rules the Leo full moon. And so it's combining forces with the planet of Pluto. Now, when the sun and the Pluto come together, it's about revealing uncomfortable truths about who you have become, either with children, giving birth, uh, creating projects, um, affairs, um, and where we need to release the urge to control the outcomes of things in order to align more with a healthier, more authentic version of who you are. There's something that Pluto and the sun will, will shine a light on that has to do with possibly you in groups, you with your networks, you with your goals, and that that's not exactly the most healthiest. Pluto being the planet of transformation is going to be digging deep to get to the bottom of things in order to force you to change. Now, Leo is seen as um, uh, it's 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 our ego. And so it's revealing where you may have lost touch with what makes you special, with what makes you unique with these creative projects or these networks that you are aligned with. Um, or these social circles that you are part of and what makes you special and unique and where you have strayed from your in integrity and where have you resorted to control tactics um, either due to fear or paranoia of it could be with somebody that you're having an affair with or you're in a social circle with somebody and you're not feeling comfortable with where they are or or how you feel about your status in that circle or in that network or in that group. And this could be through work or through home, um, like through pleasure. And so there's these two areas of your life that are like battling it out with you having to work through how do I transform? Pluto is saying, step out of, of ego and work in more of a headspace, easier said than done. And so bringing to light things that you might want to keep private and in the shadows, not wanting everybody to know how you feel about things. Um, now there's a square to Jupiter. Jupiter is going to be adding this other layer. Jupiter is an expansive planet. It, it expands everything that it touches. And so it's expanding your emotions, your feelings, and um, the moon, it's expanding that, and the sun. And so it's about drama and exaggeration and making things bigger than what they really are. Or you're going to feel like that they're bigger than what they really are. Jupiter is encouraging this expansive and energy and it wants it, it wants you to work past this and avoid clashes with your ego and with your will about no I started this group no I started this project no I claim ownership of this this is my creative project it's about stepping out of ego and working through a headspace now Jupiter is also in a beautiful harmonious trine with Venus Jupiter and Venus are both the great benefics and so they're working together Venus is at the bottom of your chart it's about building a solid stable uh, foundation a uh, home Venus is beauty and money and cash and it's um, it's offering you this positive outlet that says look work through these energies stay out of your heart space and don't get um, take your feelings out of it 
like work from a headspace, get your feelings out of it and say, what can I take from these clashes or these things that are going on in my life, these comments that are bantering back and forth? And where can I focus on taking the positive from it and building upon that? It's it's the ultimate outcome is for these challenges that hold a promise of growth and prosperity for you to move forward with. All right, so Libra, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Join me live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. To get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. And for a private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com. So for Scorpio Sun and Scorpio Rising, this full moon is occurring at the top of your chart. Um, this is authority figures. This is your legacy, your reputation, you being seen in the outside world. The 10th house is authority, government, um, it's uh, professional life, your ambitions, your reputation. It is uh, anybody that has authority over you, like this could be a boss, it could be honors, it could be awards, but it's basically think about you on a pedestal being seen by everybody. And so there's going to be some things that are revealed, some things that are going to be ending, um, some type of a culmination. Now this full moon is going to be directing our attention to leadership and create creative projects. And so um, being about endings and culminations, it's also an opportunity for you to realize that there's something inside of you that's becoming more concrete in the physical world. Um, this full moon is in a fixed T-square with the Sun and Pluto in your fourth house of home. So these two areas of your life are opposing each other. And um, the T-square is kind of like this stalemate of career, home, career, home, what has to give. And there will be this um, energy that's activated because it's bottled up energy. And when it's, it's stored up energy, when it's activated, it will release through the Jupiter on your seventh house of partnerships, significant others. Your, the seventh house is your one plus one. So it's you with a client, you with a significant other, you with a business partner. Uh, the seventh house is contractual relationships. It's where you negotiate, it's love, it's um, uh, open enemies and exes. And so there will be something that culminates with an ending on that house. Now, the progressive sun that's in the sign of Aquarius in your fourth house, it is the ruler of this Leo full moon. And so we have all of this connection together and it's combining forces with the planet of Pluto. So when it's like literally working partners with the planet of Pluto and when they unite, it's saying, let's reveal some uncomfortable truths about who you've become and where you need to release this urge to control these outcomes in order to align more with a healthier version of your career and your home. Where have you been controlling at home or with your career, your job, or with people that are under you, like employees that are under you? Where have you worked from a space of fear and need to be more in a, a head space and less out of a heart space? Um, as the sign of Scorpio, um, you know that you learn your lessons through your experiences of other people. So always being reserved of uh, uh, having this reserve of working with other people and a fear sometimes this is uh, some this could be a time where it's not all um, it's not all authentic. It's not all real. And so you wanting to control all the situations is not going to be healthy. This is about let go, let flow and allowing the transformation for you to dig deep to the bottom of things of why do you feel the need to have control over certain things that have to do with your home and your career. The, the full moon in Leo is going to also be an opportunity where you're going to say, where have I lost touch with what makes me special um, with creative projects or tapping into my inner child? Um, what makes you unique? Um, 
the Pluto and the sun is going to, the, the, the sun always illuminates the full moon. It reveals things that we, we knew were there, but we would like to keep them hidden. And so it's where have you strayed? Where from your integrity? Um, where have you resorted in these control tactics uh, for fear, for paranoia? And Pluto is saying, it's time for you to transform. It is time for you to bring to the light things that you want to keep private that were in the shadows and now it's like just bring it to the surface and let's all deal with it like secret secrets are no fun unless they're shared with everyone um that's not one of your favorite sayings unless it's other people's secrets and like you're not wanting to give up yours um the sun squared to jupiter is going to add this other layer of emotional and potential drama and exaggeration that has to do with a partner, a significant other, a business person, a client. Um, so this is something that has to do with your home, your work being revealed to like a partner. And um, Jupiter is encouraging expansion, expansion and this expansious energy leads to clashes of your ego and possibly battles of will between um, you wanting to keep some things on the down low. Now, the positive that comes from this is Jupiter is in a beautiful, harmonious trine with Venus. Both Jupiter and Venus are considered the great benefics. They are working together to say, look, I'm going to put you in an uncomfortable position because I want you to do some shadow work. I want you to work through these fears of yours. And I want you to work from a, a headspace, not a heart space. Um, in order to attain the ultimate outcome of these challenges is the promise of you experiencing growth and prosperity in those three areas of your life. So Scorpio, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Um, I invite you to join me live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule at willagracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Sagittarius Sun and Sagittarius Rising, this full moon is occurring in your ninth house. This is the house of cross-cultural experiences, foreign people, places, things. The ninth house is the house of religion and spirituality, um, getting things published, things that have to do with the law, taking a class, taking a workshop. All of these topics are jam-packed into one house that has to do with you in the outside world and how you experience that. Full moons always bring about endings, closures. They're an opportunity for a chapter to end. With this one, it's about endings and culminations with you realizing that there's something inside of you or that there's something that's becoming more concrete in the physical world of, the, of legal matters or of places that you've studied or that you've been to or things that you have experienced that um, that other people around you maybe not have experienced. Now this full moon also is in a T-square with uh, the sun and Pluto in your third house. The third house represents your siblings, your cousins, your neighbors, it's short distance travel. It's the way that you communicate. And so in the sign of Aquarius, this is gonna be um, a force that um, uh, that's going to be re revealing some uncomfortable truths. Pluto is the planet of transformation. It just com the sun and Pluto are combining together and saying uh, you need to release some of your control issues. You need to re um, you need to work on being more in alignment with your higher self. The release point of this T-square is going to be Jupiter. Jupiter is in your sixth house of your daily habits. You're finding a mentor, finding a guide. Um, it's also the house of coworkers and how you communicate with coworkers. It's your mental, physical, spiritual health, well-being. And so when we look at this all combined, it's about revealing hidden truths about who you have become and where you need to release the urge of controlling things in order for you to feel safe and secure and aligning with a healthier version of yourself. There's something about your home th with siblings and cousins and neighbors and you in the outside world with how you connect with other people far and wide. And where does this erupt with daily habits? Walk it, talk it and maybe speak to a guidance, uh, like uh, somebody for guidance, which could be a mentor or a guide, and practice this with your daily habits. 
Pluto wants you to transform and dig deep into um, why you need to release the urge to control things. And this could be uh, control the topic of conversation or control uh, with how you say things, writing, spirituality, religion, um, all of these topics. It's about you saying, I need to align more with a healthier uh, version of myself. Now, the full moon in Leo also is about re revealing where you've lost touch with what makes you special and what makes you unique. Um, tapping into like your inner child, the desire to want to travel, the desire to connect with other people who have different thoughts and ideas and beliefs, and um, what makes you special. Pluto is going to say, where have you strayed from your integrity um, and resorted to possible control tactics with family or with um, people that are close to you that you see on a daily basis, like it could even be neighbors or coworkers, um, either out of fear or out of this uh, Pluto is paranoia. And so um, with messages, uh, this could be email, this could be news, this could be phone, text, anything that's the written or any kind of, of conversations, talking or exchanging ideas and um, taking all this information in and being a little bit paranoid about what you're hearing and what you're seeing. And so it's bringing to light also some I, um, areas of your life that you'd probably like to keep private and in the shadows. And Pluto's not going to allow that to happen. Pluto is literally, because it's with the sun, the sun, the sun illuminates the full moon. And so it's illuminating some things that you would like to keep in the shadows, some things that you'd like to keep private. Now the sun square to Jupiter is going to add a layer of this um, emotional and potential drama and exaggeration. Jupiter expands everything that it touches. Jupiter is the great benefic, but it's here saying, I'm going to expand your feelings, the moon, in Leo, your pride. And, and so there could be this expansion of energy that leads to clashes where you it's it's like don't say that about me my feelings are hurt or i didn't do that or uh, that's not my fault those are the things that can be said at this time and so it's going to be a battle of wills of of your connection to other people or classes or workshops or these these cult cross-cultural experiences with people that are close to home and it will be expanded upon um, where you're going to have to tap out of your heart space and into your head space to say I'm not going to attach that to my ego that is them this is who I am now Jupiter is also forming this harmonious trine to Venus in your second house of your self-worth your cash your property I love this because now we have two benefics working together we have uh, Jupiter and Venus saying let's collaborate together there's going to be this hard energy um, pushing you to transform pushing you to stay I have to stay out of my own way I have to like get out of my my space of ego and tap into my head and say, what part of this is really true? What part do I have to own? Because it cannot all be not true. And then say, all right, I'm going to take that amid all of these tensions and attain the ultimate outcome of these challenges for the promise of growth and prosperity. And it all has to do with your self-worth. All right, so Sagittarius, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Join me live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Capricorn Sun and Capricorn Rising, you have this beautiful full moon in your eighth house of your shared resources. The eighth house is the house of deep bonding. It's alimony, child support, debt, taxes. It's the house that you are linked with somebody else. It's joint ventures, shared resources. It could be family members if there is uh, money or wills or a home. It could be business partners. It could be a marital partner. It could be an ex. It has all of those um, um, all of those um, shared resources of, of joint ventures that you have in your life. So there's going to be something that's coming to an end, something that's going to be revealed. Um, this full moon is really drawing your, the attention to your leadership and your creativity. It is um, bringing about an ending. 
and it's saying, okay, we're, we're done with this week and now move on. And it's going to be bringing the realization that there's something that's inside of you that's becoming more concrete in the physical world. There is this fixed square between uh, the sun and Pluto in your second house of your self-worth, your cash, your property, your resources, your skill set. The second house is your salary, your income. It's your gifts and your talents of what you bring. And so we have the sun saying, I know what my self-worth is and the moon say there's going to be some endings to some shared topics of some things that we have together. A T-square is kind of like a stalemate. I want this, I want this, where will it push out of? And so it's about this bottled up energy and it needs to be released. The stored up energy is going to erupt when it's activated through the planet of Jupiter in your fifth house of children, childlike activities, affairs, art, music, creativity, the house where we take risks. The fifth house has everything to do with your investments or gambling. The fifth house has to do with how you express yourself. So there's some things going on between what is yours, what is somebody else's, and it, it will um, release with children or creativity or uh, something that's very, very personal to you. Now, the progressive sun in the sign of Aquarius in your second house, um, it rules the sign of this Leo full moon and it's literally combining forces with the planet of Pluto. So when the sun and Pluto come together, it's revealing these uncomfortable truths about who you have become and where you need to release the urge to control these outcomes in order to align with like a more healthier, authentic version of yourself. So you have your self-esteem wanting to reveal that maybe you have been um, definitely controlling over some situations that you have with other people through contracts. They could be business or personal or exes or marital. And so you're going to have to face some truths about yourself, about where you need to release this urge to control in order to align higher. The planet of transformation, Pluto, will have you really digging deeper to get to the bottom of why do you feel these desires? What fear are you working from? Um, the full moon in Leo is here to reveal where you've lost touch with um, what makes you special? What makes you unique? Tapping into your inner child. Um, it is, since it's square with Pluto, it's going to reveal where have you strayed from your own integrity and you've done some things or said some things that are not who you really are. You've resorted to some control tactics due to working from fear or paranoia and um, wanting to transform. It's going to have you bringing to light um, things that you'd rather keep in the dark or keep private. Um, like some of your actions, some of the things that you've said, maybe if you had some nasty emails or nasty texts or on a video, like somebody, you know, like how they have those ring doorbells. This is about something that you've said or done that can be revealed that that's truly not your character. And it will be revealed to say, let's step into a healthier space. Let's tap into get out of ego and tap into a, a healthier headspace. Now the sun and um, the moon being square to Jupiter, Jupiter, Jupiter is adding this layer of emotional, the moon and possible drama and exaggeration because it blows things up. It makes things bigger. It expands things. And Jupiter is encouraging this expansion and this expansive energy that will lead to clashes with your ego and a battle of wills between you and a family member, you in business or you in partner or you in like a significant other. And it'll and the possible outcome if there's children could also involve children or a love affair or creative projects. Now, on a positive note, um, Jupiter is forming this beautiful harmonious trine that's in your first house of self, who you are, your strength, your habits, how people see you. I always say the first house is your business card or your website. It's who you are presenting to the world. I love this for you because it's going to be this positive outlet for all of this tension to say, let's just bring it out. And I want to attain the ultimate outcome of these challenges and me releasing myself of 
who I was, this path that I was going down. And that's not me. That is not who I am. And holding the promise of growth and prosperity of who back back to who you really are and um, this one is just about revealing some truths we all have shadows and this could be revealing some things that you would like to keep private reminding you that that's not who you are and moving forward this is who you're going to be I would love to hear about how this resonates with you and please join me live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. For a private consultation, you can schedule at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe. So for Aquarius Sun and Aquarius Rising, this full moon is occurring in your seventh house. So the seventh house is your one plus one house. It's where we have these contractual agreements. It's your business partner, your significant other, your marital partner, your best friends, your clients. It is uh, your exes. It is open enemies. It's anybody that you have this one-on-one -on -one relationship um, to uh, that could be love or contracts or negotiation or cooperation. So there will be an ending or a closure or something that will be revealed in that area of your life. Now, the full moon is literally directing your attention to matters of leadership and creativity and uh, this ending. And it's about having this realization that there's something inside of you that's becoming more concrete in the physical world. Now, this full moon is also in a fixed square. So we have the sun and Pluto in your first house of self. This has everything to do with your strength, your habits. I call it your business card or your website. It's how people see you. It's your self-expression. It's your vitality. It's your appearance. It's your power. It's how you present yourself to the world. Now, a T-square is kind of like the stalemate situation where who you are and who your partner are um, or who you are with your partner, business partner, significant other, best friend, there's some kind of a clash going on and there's this bottled up energy that needs to be released and the stored up energy, it's it erupts when it's activated and it will erupt with Jupiter in your fourth house of home, family roots foundation uh the fourth house is uh your ancestors it's literally the foundation of who you are it's also can be people who feel like family or those people who shape you so know that you're going to have this confrontation there's something that has to be an, an ending of who you are partnership and it will result in an of of an explosion of your fourth house of home and so the progressive sun in Aquarius in your first house of self um, it is the ruler of the Leo full moon in your seventh house like it rules it and so it's an opportunity for you to tap into um, childlike activities and your creativity when the Sun and the Pluto and Pluto unite in your first house of self they're they're teaming up like double teaming up um, revealing these uncomfortable truths about something that you want to keep private about yourself the first house is your appearance your power like it is you your temperament it is your secrets it's things about yourself that you don't want to share with others and so when the Sun and Pluto come together, it's saying, where do you need to release control over others, partners, that could be best friends, significant others, um, clients, where do you need to release this control and align with a healthier, happier version of yourself? It's acknowledging your, your shadow side of needing control, needing stability, but not always able to have it and needing to be able to go with the flow more. Pluto being the planet of transformation says you need to dig deep to get to the bottom of things in order for things to change. You are part of the problem and you wanting to have control over everything is part of the problem. This full moon in Leo can reveal where you have lost touch with things that make you special, things that make you unique. And Pluto is saying, where have you strayed from your integrity and resorted to control tactics um, out of either fear or paranoia of my partner's gonna go here or something that has, to, or this client will go here or my best friend. Where do you have to get out of your own way 
and work on trust. And Pluto says, I, I want you to transform. And so it's going to bring to light some of these aspects that you would prefer to keep in private and in the shadows. And this is possibly clients, business partners, friends, significant others calling you out, calling you out, or you could be also calling them out. Um, remember, it's in your seventh house of partnership. So you could be calling out that I feel stifled. I feel I feel held down. I, I like there is no freedom and Aquarius needs freedom. And so the sun is going to be adding another layer because of the square to Jupiter in your house of home. It's layering, it's bringing this layer of, of expanding the drama, expanding the exaggeration that, um, it will bring it to light and just share it. And it's, things are not as bad. Jupiter encourages expansion, expansion. And so there could be this clash with your ego and battles of will that have to do with you and a business partner, a significant other, a friend. It's, it's like, and where is it going to end? I encourage you to work from a place of head and not heart. Now, what's going to support you is Jupiter is in this beautiful trine with Venus. The two great benefics are working together to say, look, I'm going to give you this difficulty because I want you to face some of your fears and what's going to come from it is harmony. The tw uh, Venus in the 12th house, your 12th house is fears. It's your intuition. It's your dreams. It's also, um, your subconscious mind it's where we go to rest and retreat and to tap into things that um like to leave um like what's going on out here and then tap into our our private inner world and so you dealing with all this um jupiter and venus are trying to assure you that joy is attainable freedom is going to be workable and the ultimate outcome of this these challenges holds the promise of growth and prosperity for your mental physical spiritual health and well-being between you and a partner and your home so aquarius i would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below please join me live tuesdays at 6 p.m eastern standard time where i offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations for a private consultation you can schedule that at willowgracemystic.com and to get updates as soon as they're released please subscribe so for Pisces Sun and Pisces Rising, this full moon is occurring in your sixth house. This is the house of your mental, physical, spiritual, psychological, health, well-being. It's also the house where we find a mentor or a guide. So there could be some ending that has to do with I'm not going to see that counselor anymore or, or daily habits. I'm not, I'm, I've reached my health goal and I'm no longer going to be doing that. Um, these full moons that they bring about these realizations that, or a culmination that they're, they're there's something that's inside of you that's becoming more concrete in this physical world. So maybe you've reached that, that health goal, or maybe you have gone as far as this counselor can help you. Um, being the house of daily habits, this has been something that you've been working on for a while. This is also the house of where we find the balance between our home and our work. Now there is this fixed square. The fixed square goes between the sun and Pluto in your 12th house. Now the 12th house is the hidden house. It's secrets. It is um, the private house. It's your dreams, your intuition, uh, shamanic uh, work. It is rest and retreat. It's the house of prisons or institutions or hospitalizations. It's the house of ashrams and other dimensions. And it's where we go to retreat and tap into uh, for meditation. Um, it's our it's our subconscious connection to the earthly realm. And so now we have this T square between, um, think of it as a stalemate between things that you're doing daily and your private side of what you're not sharing with others. And there's going to be some things that could become bottled up and needing to be released. At this stored energy, it can erupt when it's activated and it will erupt through the planet of Jupiter in your third house of communication. The third house is communicating openly, talking, exchanging ideas with cousins and family and neighbors and coworkers. And it's things that people that are like you literally communicating and using your words. It's the house of of writing and spirituality and how you say things and where you connect with others like 
on a on a daily basis and so we have the progressive sun in Aquarius in your 12th house and it rules this Leo full moon. It's combining forces with the planet of Pluto and it's saying, I'm going to reveal some things about you. And so we have some, your 12th house of, I wanna keep some things secret, revealing some things about your daily habits, mentors, guides, and hidden truths. And it could make you feel uncomfortable. It's, um, it's about control and where you are going to need to release the urge to control all outcomes and in order to align with your best and highest good, a more healthy or authentic version of yourself. Pluto being the planet of transformation will have you digging deep to get to the bottom of things in order for change. And the 12th house is the house of secrets. And it's like saying, I'm going to have to do the work to know why I am acting like this, why this bothers me, why, what, and this could be from past lives or from generational trauma. But it's like, I have to be the one to figure some of these things out and identify this. Now, this full moon in Leo is going to be revealing possibly where you have lost touch with what makes you special, what makes you unique. Um, Leo is childlike and healing the inner child. And with the square to Pluto, it could reveal where you've strayed from your own integrity in your daily habits, maybe resorted to some control tactics with others. Um, this could be out of fear. This could be out of paranoia. Um, Pluto wants to transform and it works from sometimes a place of fear. And so this is bringing to light aspects that you would like to keep private and in the shadows. Um, now the sun is also square to Jupiter and so is the moon. And so it's adding this other layer of emotional, the moon and potential drama and exaggeration because Jupiter expands everything that it touches. It, 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 the expansion is of energy that could have you clashing with things of your ego, the sun, and Leo, both of those signs. So this is like a clash of your ego and a clash of your will and feeling that you are judged. And take yourself out of your heart space, work from a, a head space and say, what can I take from this to move forward from this, to heal from this. Now, Jupiter is forming a harmonious trine with the planet of Venus in the sign of Capricorn. I love that the two great benefics are working together. So we have Jupiter expanding some things saying, look, just rip it off like a Band-Aid. Let's just get it over. This is like people just telling you things or, or revealing some things about you. And then Jupiter is saying, I'm going to expand it, but I'm also going to work with Venus with your hopes, your wishes, your goals, your dreams, and the networks of people that you need to align with. So this could, this is, this is like an opportunity to explore other networks, other goals, and be relieved of this, you know, the secret is no more. It is um, working from, okay, well, now that the cat's out of the bag, I can, everybody knows about it. I'm, I'm moving on with this. And it's uh, an opportunity to take a deep breath. Jupiter forming this harmonious trine is offering this positive outlet with all of these, the, the, the tension points that are going to be going on. It's assuring you that you will experience joy. It is attainable and it is the ultimate outcome of these challenges that hold the promise of, of growth and prosperity for where you want to go and things that you want to do in life. All right, so Pisces, I would love to hear about how this resonates with you in the comments below. Please join me live Tuesdays at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, where I offer new moon and full moon astrology consultations. And to get updates as soon as they're released, please subscribe.